The year is 2006, and you know, things are actually looking pretty good here. We have Nintendo releasing the Wii. All right, games are on the up and up, but then my career is on the downswing because Google just bought YouTube by purchasing $1.65 billion in stock. However, 2006 also signified the release of our Lord and Savior, Sonic 06, one of the best games ever made. Play it for yourself and find out. I don't want to spoil that experience for you. But also, one trying to compete with it, keep up with it, was none other than Elder Scrolls for Oblivion, the game responsible for me falling in love with Bethesda Game Studio style games. You see, the first one I did play was Fallout 3, and I hated it. But I went on to play Oblivion afterwards, and I loved it. So then I went back to Fallout 3, and I love that too. And now I got the Bethesda fanboy shadow following me wherever I go in every piece of content. So why not indulge once more? Let's go back to Elder Scrolls for Oblivion and see just how well it's aged. But first, a word from our sponsor. Oh, hi, didn't see you there. You're probably wondering why me the man who will TMNT Shredder's Revenge into Xbox Game Pass is here in Mr. Maddie's office. And it's because I'm happy to tell you that I have partnered with G Fuel. And yes, I did this so I can afford a brand new Blazer. Thank you very much. Now, when they first contacted me, I said, look, not really into energy drinks. Don't think this is gonna work. They said, up, oh, hold the phone. We got people like you covered. They introduced me to this hydration line and it is a match made in heaven. Not only in branding, because they have great flavors like a Spider-Man flavor, a Doctor Strange flavor that is absolutely godlike, but also that this line is for people like me who are about the health is wealth mindset, right? Electrolytes, antioxidants, vitamins, all packed away in the G Fuel hydration line. So it was a partnership that just made a lot of sense, and I'm stoked to be a part of the G Fuel family. So you'll be seeing a little bit of them here on the channel, and yes, maybe one day I'll be able to afford a brand new blazer because of this. We'll see. But with that, if you're interested in supporting G Fuel, supporting me through that, head to the link in the description down below and check out some of the hydration line there. It tastes absolutely incredible. And it's a great sweet treat for those of you out there who have a little hankering. Maybe you want to have a soda, but you don't want to have the actual soda that's bad for you. This is a perfect substitute for that as well. Cannot recommend it enough. If there is a game, responsible for the Bethesda fanboyism that you have witnessed over the last 10 years of my career. Look no further than the title on the screen. Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion was a moment not only in our video game industry, presenting a unprecedented open world RPG experience, but it was a life changer for me. For it was then and there that I would plunge deep into the Bethesda Game Studios catalog and fall in love with all their games. Now, we already talked about why you need to play the game this year, but as always with the other BGS games, I want to go back, lay my hands on it, walk you through why these games are so special. So let's do that with a brand new game. Oh, this is one of my favorite shots in the intro. Just this is the twenty combing all the way across the year of mm. Akatosh four thirty three. Indeed, Akatosh. Yes, praise These Akatosh. Are the closing days <laughs> of the third era and the final hours of my life. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. So powerful, and it's the only cutscene in the game like this. <laughs> I needed more of this in my life. Oh God. Okay. So, um, hmm, hmm. Character creator, right? <laughs> this man. You want to talk about someone who's seen some shit? I was saying that the emperor has, but my character. I mean, holy moly! All right. Of course, you have to be Khajiit. There's no other way to play these games anymore. I'm sorry. As you grow older, if you're not choosing Khajiit as your favorite race, I feel bad for you. Because look at the hairstyles. Main, common. Look at that flow. Receding hairline who? Not, not Mr. Khajiit. He can have dreads. I love that. Oh, this is great. The headband, that's my look for sure. Just a real warrior. And how long can we make that? We can go really long. I love that down to the shoulders. Perfect. 
Do you anyone, does anyone notice the actual aging difference here? <laughs> it, I respect that they included it in the game, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know which one I like more. I guess right here. Yeah, that that's fine. Wait, you can change the complexion of a Khajiit? Hmm. Yeah, my man's been through some stuff. And we'll name our character name. The only thing he should ever be called. All right. Todd the Khajiit. You know, I remember this was the first game where Bethesda Game Studios was claimed to have a prison fetish because every game they had was in a prison. And I love how the first person who speaks to you references what race you are. A little, you know, a little role-playing element there. Oh, call me a kitty. This cat has claws, baby. Best, best hope that gate is locked when I get over there. You should be scared, sir. You should be scared, sir. I'm gonna break through any moment now. Hey, you hear that? The gods are coming. For you! <laughs> <laughs> I love how bad of an evil laugh it is. It's so good. The gods are coming. For you. Prisoner, stand away from the door. All right, Wes Johnson, calm down. My man voices everyone in the game. Good, let's go. We're not out of this yet. You. I've there we go. Get ready for the biggest zoom of all time. Let me see. Your <laughs> you are the one from my dreams. If Starfield's game gameplay was anything to go off of, expect this, this type of conversation game. style in that game. Because we saw a little bit of it, and it was even closer than what we're seeing here. What's going on, Emperor Uriel Septum, aka I Sean Bean? My sons and Love that. Next. Love the that. Are leading me out of the city along a secret escape route. Why am I in jail? Perhaps the gods have placed you here so that we <laughs> The gods meet. put me in jail. As for what you have done, it does not matter. Bethesda's that just wiping away that part. That's why, again, prison fetish, fetish, right? They were just like, let's just put him there. That's an easy way to get the king of the empire and you to connect is a little prison secret passage. I am your emperor, Uriel Septim. Oh no, I said Uriel earlier. I'm going to get I torn apart by the Elder Scrolls community. Oh no, oh no, I'm sorry. You were a citizen of Tamriel. All right, we're officially out on our own. Our adventure has begun for all but a brief moment until we reunite with the Emperor, who said, uh, well, we'll catch you. We'll see you around. Catch you later, big guy. But little does he know that my Khajiit, a.k.a. Todd Howard, is uh, got his, his fingerprints all over this story. I don't have any, I don't have any lock picks. Hold on now. Doesn't someone have lock picks around here? Don't you, sir, have some? You do. Ah, see, memory. Memory serves me well here. Let's do this. Yeah, now this lockpick minigame is is so different from what we're used to with every other lockpicking minigame that has copied Bethesda since, where it's always like twisting and angling. This is just bump it up and then click, and then you move on to the next lock. And I think it's so much better. It's so much simpler, <laughs> and it's much more satisfying. But uh, they changed it for the sake of change. Man, I forgot you can't just like swing away in this game. You, you, your fatigue meter, it goes low so quick. Mine's already empty. But I think that's where the athleticism skill comes in and is really useful. And it's why they always recommend you just like jump everywhere in this game. <laughs> so you can get that stamina bar up quick. Uh. Let me just tell you the button layout on PC here for Oblivion is so perplexing, like pressing the space bar to, to open these chests and hitting tab to open up an inventory. It, it, it just feels a little different from usual. Nothing problematic necessarily, but also like not seeing your shield in your other hand when your weapon's ready. Just little, little changes in FOV and controls. It's amazing what difference it makes compared to Skyrim. And also just pressing C to cast magic. It'll just have like a hot keyed spell. I think that animation is the same even if I shoot out a fireball. It just does the same like that and out comes a fireball. You had to be resourceful when you were a hundred man team over at Bethesda. Am I the only one who kind of ignores the race I pick? Such as I'm a Khajiit and normally I'll play as a Khajiit should, you know, stealth focused. But at the same time, I almost do a flavor pick for race in this in these games. Like, you know, I just want to be a Khajiit just because I think the voice sounds cool in combat. Like the, ooh, when he gets hit. So 
it's just a like I said, a flavor thing for me. I, I, am I alone on that? Because I don't know how stingy the Elder Scrolls community is with uh, with their lore and, and respecting that type of stuff. Right now, I'm a Khajiit wearing heavy armor. Perish the thought. Oh yeah, there's durability, weapon durability in this game. Not a lot of people like weapon durability. I'm a fan of it because it makes you actually take care of your stuff, but I understand for a lot of people when it comes to Breath of the Wild, it kind of like ruined what weapon durability did for games. Like I thought Fallout had a pretty good weapon durability system where you could like roll other weapons into it and increase the durability of them, but I, I don't know. I, I was happy to see it in this game again here. Oh, spongy enemies. I forgot this is why I played Oblivion on easy. Oh, no. The memories. No. <laughs> I forgot about spongy enemies. Yeah, that was always my play. I, I remember distinctly starting off on easy and telling friends to start off on easy just because I, I think the damage balancing in a Bethesda game is it's also on a slider. I just think it's typically not that great. I, I Outside of maybe Fallout 4, I think that was the only time they got rubber banding just right. But this was one of those games that in the early days, they just really hit you hard from the get-go. And I didn't find it that fun because you just swing away at the same enemy like I did there. Hello, it's me. Hi. Hi. Come with us. Okay. I mean, let's do it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, wait, 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 uh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Oh, I thought they were attacking me. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I don't remember if they allow you to make that mistake or not. I was pretty confident they didn't let you make that mistake. Which sign marked your birth? What an elegant transition. I love the art here. I always have loved the sign art. Morrowind in particular is my favorite, but picking your sign and tailoring your build a little bit the custom classes all that stuff i feel i feel like oblivion was the best hybrid of skyrim's more action level up by doing gameplay while retaining enough of the morrowind dna i've always been a big steed guy just a bonus of 20 to your speed attribute sounds broken but we're gonna go with thief i think thief is the good play here for our for our Khajiit and their starting stats. The signs I read show the end of my path. Today the thief shall guide your steps on the road to destiny. See another little you know a reference to the choice you made. See to me that's what really defines these older BGS games. Oftentimes they're like, oh, they didn't make role playing games, but they did. They they reference choices you make and that's all we ask for. Just acknowledge us. Men are but flesh and blood. They know their doom but not the hour. And this, this game, to see I will throw out there best. the bold take that I do think... My actually, is it bold? Fate. I think Oblivion is the best written BGS game. I really do. I love Fallout 3 with all my heart, but that's really like an atmosphere and a vibe. But what he said there about men know their doom, but not the hour. I don't know. That's just... As someone who has an existential crisis every other week, I'm big on that type of writing where I go, oh, I felt that. Ooh, I really felt that. And when you get to the Dark Brotherhood in this game, whew, Lord have mercy. I go to my grave, a tongue shriller than all the music calls me. Look at that. I love that. Just, you shall ooh. follow me. I don't even know what he was saying there, but that just sounded good. <laughs> the Emperor's in danger. If I remember correctly, the Emperor just stops you mid-combat when he's about to die, and the camera zooms in on him, and he has the most unelegant death just by the way that cutscenes in this game work. I'll, I'll make sure to point it out when it happens. It's pretty hilarious. Uh, did, did the Emperor... There we go. <laughs> A little bit does the jank for the video. Put that on display. Don't see any good options here. They're behind us. Wait here, sire. Wait here with the Emperor. Guard him with your life. Biggest mistake the Blades could ever make here. For the Blades and the Emperor. I remember always fighting hard out here, thinking I could stop the inevitable, but your fate is sealed in this game. I can go no further. You alone must stand against the Prince of Destruction and his mortal Here we go. He must not have the amulet. This is it. <laughs> this is it. 
You know, you can't move. You can only look around. And you just try. <laughs> oh, all right. Hey, I'm going to loot him now. I can't, right? You going to blame me, Boris? We failed. I failed. I'm guessing you're an experienced knight. Am I right? I love that he calls you a knight because then this is where you can either pick a class again, the beautiful art, or you can do your own custom class, which you choose your specialization. Like, okay, I want to do combat. You hit okay. You pick your two favorite attributes. Again, combat, and we'll do, say, speed, just to kind of, I don't know. It goes completely against what we're doing with the thief class, but I digress. And then you choose seven major skills that start at 25, and then some minor skills. I just love how you can do that. So we're just going to pick a bunch of random ones here again for the sake of showing it off because then you can name it and i i just love again the flavor here the flavor of oblivion is so strong and, and the customization you can do not only in your class but in spells too it's it's absolutely wonderful i always get a kick out of the fact that they just really trust you <laughs> they're just like oh yeah the emperor saw something in you we left the man's dead on the floor it could have been you but it's it's definitely not so we're fine you know you go on and continue your adventure i'm gonna watch his body i'm cool with it because it's a video game but uh, i think in today's narrative standards that might not fly as well all right and then the step out moment now i love this particular step out moment because you're submerged right in the heart of the map i've talked about this a bit in my breakdown of the bethesda step out moment where a lot of games from Bethesda Game Studio sort of put your back against the wall and urge you to go forward. But what I love about Oblivion out here, beyond its wonderful textures that we can see out there, I mean, my God, the draw just, it's just, oh, it's so good, is it not for its age? Um, but I love that I can go any direction truly and begin exploring. I'm not just pushed forward, although they make the main point of interest that you'll see at the end of this pier here, these alien ruins, they want you to go there perhaps as like the first, hey, what's that? But then to your east up there is a cave. To the west is the woods and you can see a little crevice down there. And obviously you don't know what's south until you move to the side a little bit. And you can see the Imperial City itself. So there's something really neat to find in every single direction. And it's why I think Oblivion does have one of the best step out moments next to Fallout 3, because it truly can feel different every time you come out. Like when I'm always stepping out of Fallout 4's vault, I'm going to go straight to Sanctuary. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. There's only one of two places you can go. It's the farm to the Northeast or Sanctuary. Not really the best step out moment. Obviously, Fallout 3 has a number of locations. You can go to Springvale, you can go to Megaton, you can go to Springvale Elementary, et cetera, et cetera. There are a number of places you can go. But in this game, true freedom and exploration, and for its time, very important, very much defined the game. But what we're approaching now is, again, the alien ruins. We're gonna enter them here. One thing that's worth calling out, and not in a bad way call out, when it comes to Bethesda Game Studios, is their amazing dungeon design here. And I say amazing because while some people coming back to this game will groan at some of the repetitive design, every dungeon you explore, and there are hundreds in this game, no exaggeration, all of the dungeons you explore are by one person. And so it is very much template driven, for sure. And you will feel, again, a sense of familiarity. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, you won't. However, I think it is impressive that one person managed all of this. Because that's when Bethesda was really punching above their weight. Bethesda Game Studios can't simply do that nowadays. They had to expand, get new studios. You know how it all went. I love how my personality is being drained. I am not. That's impossible. I am a YouTuber. Anyway. Nowadays, they can't do that as much because you can't superhuman your way to great video games. Uh, just the way they're made simply won't allow it. But there, there was a time you could, you know, overcome the odds a bit more and uh, punch above your weight. And Bethesda did that. And 
This is how they created little templates for their dungeons and repeated them in all different configurations. And one of those configurations was the alien ruins. Another one of those configurations you saw were the sewers. Another one of those were the cave systems. You saw those. And pretty much in the first 30 minutes of the game, you see everything <laughs> that Oblivion kind of has to offer outside of the Oblivion gates themselves, which is both funny and sad because, again, you can get tired of it quickly. Hey now, let's be nice. A fellow Khajiit, I can't, but I did. Oh, the pain. One great thing about Oblivion, in my opinion, is I think the torch is useful. So obviously the shield's gonna give you additional defense, protect you from damage. And you'll see here what it's like without the torch. These dungeons can get pretty dark, obviously, with the rooms with the alien crystals withstanding. But however, when you unequip your shield, of course, the torch is going to do its thing, right? And I like it because then your sword is your only protection and you're not as beefy. And that encourages a little bit more stealth. Unless you're like this guy who's sleeping really hard, I guess. <laughs> but I love that type of stuff because it puts a little choice in your gameplay. And it makes a part of Skyrim that I, I wish was utilized more, the darkness. Uh, it actually matters here in Oblivion, at least if you want to see what you're doing. There's also a chance you're playing this game for the 18th time and you know where all the hot spots are, which is a thing. But for those who haven't, it's just another thing Maddie loves about the game. And of course, we love secret passages in dungeons, don't we? Step it on the tile. There's blood here. Ooh, mm, give me some of that. Every day of the week, we see a dead bandit. Clearly a sacrifice. What's going on down here? I don't even remember. What is happening down here? This is, this is not good. This is really bad. As you can see here, there's plenty of secret passages. Ever since I played What Remains of Edith Finch for the first time. Oh my, there's a zombie here. Ever since I played that for the first time, I, I, I realized how much I love places with secret passages. Like even the ye old secret passage behind a bookcase. Just, it just works for me, man. Yeah, if I could speak without stuttering one day, that'd be fucking amazing. Now, the issue with these secret passages is it's pretty easy to lose your way sometimes. That's for damn sure. Look at this, look at the jog on this unit. Wow. I, I said jog, by the way. I want everyone to make sure that I, I'm not talking about the jock of a skeleton. I, I realize now with how quickly I speak, it, it could have sounded like that. I'm not admiring the uh, pelvic area of the skeleton. I'm actually curious what happens if you jump into the water with your torch. Away it goes. Little underwater cavern, Lara Croft action here. And now I believe I've lost... A torch. No, I haven't. I had five before. Okay, cool. Thanks, Bethesda. <laughs> Making me look stupid. Oh, that moment of hesitation in any lockpicking sequence in this game. You're like, oh, there we go. That's the one I should have done. Whew. I just gotta say, wandering this open world and the soundtrack playing lightly in the background as the area loads, as it says in the text. Uh, this is such a special video game. It, it's always so nice to be back in Oblivion. I, I really do truly love this game. And it just highlights, I think, the way Bethesda's music, um, this one was by Jeremy Soul, this track, evokes a sense of emotion. And his music always has, um, just his work on KOTOR and so on. and especially in the Elder Scrolls franchise with Oblivion and Skyrim. Obviously, say what you will about the man himself, but to separate the art from the artist, the way this music adds to the experience, it becomes one of itself. You know, Bethesda always says they begin their games with the music and they build around that because it creates a feeling. And I feel when you look at something like Fallout 3, that's interesting because it has so much license to music that it's hard to understand. But when you hear this track, it, that's the one I could see. It provides that high fantasy 
adventure as you trek from one location to the next and you see this in the distance and say hey what's that i don't know man part of it's also the simplicity and the assets i don't know why but just the green hill in the background a couple of trees when you're wandering around there's nothing else but that and then you just see right there a house it manages to grab your eye a lot more because there's less happening on screen there's less that could be tucked away because technology was quite dated back then i probably should not break into this gentleman's house sorry roland i just was trying to film a video bro that's all but oblivion's biomes as well and their diversity which i can't show all of them in this video but to go from the hills to clearly we're heading towards heavy thick forests and what will be buried within them is so exciting so exciting that i couldn't even look straight <laughs> But I, I do think environmental diversity is important. This is one of the first games I played that had that. It's why I'm pointing it out, because we have to remember again, we're talking about a 2006 video game, and with where open world gaming was at, I'd say the current lead of the pack was probably, in my opinion, Pandemic. Pandemic made some really fun, wacky open world games, but when it came to Bethesda, you have to remember that with everything you're seeing and exploring, you watch me go through the dungeon, you can touch all the objects in the world, interact with them. Now it's on the level of Skyrim where like I'd find a, a plant out here and I could pick it. Like all of this is just stuff to fill out the world so it's not looking like that the whole entire way through. But the gradual transition in, into different biomes, I think really lends itself to making you believe like this truly is a world. And again, just another reason why I'm deeply in love with Oblivion. I would marry it if I could. Also, low-key, kind of dig the iconography of this game a bit more. Like, you'll see on the bottom compass there under East. I think it's a little more clear where Skyrim and Fallout 4 got a little away from that and just made a million and one shapes and icons for everything it felt like. Um, but I, I dug the way Oblivion laid it out. But I have to admit, nostalgia's talking a bit. You know, it's... It's such a little thing. Does it really matter in the scheme of an open world game? Definitely not, but it's just something that I, I've always been drawn to with this game. See you. Take care. Greetings, Kaji. What? What do you mean, what? <laughs> I'm talking to you, bro. With all the farms in Nibine, there's still plenty of forest and wilderness open for settlement. With all the farms... Good afternoon. Good day. Good afternoon. I'm not I love how they just say goodbye and they're saying hi. They're Oblivion jank on display for you all to witness. Anyone looking for work should consider the fighters guild. I hear they're always looking What a natural organic conversation here. Be seeing you. They're said to mark the place someone has died. Well now, that's ominous. Now let's say I wanted to convince this person of something one of the defining qualities of oblivion for better or for worse is the way that you can start to bribe people <laughs> and you can see their face changing in real time it's really weird man but it'll sort of depict how likely they are to listen to you about something so she clearly doesn't like that she might like to be no coerced more. you're frightening me now, let's see here. That's pretty good. Yeah, she liked that one there. She's not going to like being admired. She might like me boasting a bit. I doubt it. Oh, she doesn't like that. And then let's see how bad it gets when I admire Don't her. waste your flattery on me. Mm, not a fan, clearly. And now it's it's reset. It's like, okay, let's see if we can win some points here. So now course maxed out. No more. You're frightening Okay, me. look at that. Now we're at 45. Really <laughs> strange game. That's pretty good. <laughs> and obviously we don't want to do this because if I do this, it'll set me back don't like it did here. Such rot. She did not like being admired. I doubt it. And now we're down at 21. So if I were to go try to bribe her again, that's how persuasion Sorry. would work in this game. And Leave it felt very... Alone. And now she doesn't like me, so she's talking to me differently. First she was saying hail, now she's telling me to leave her alone. So the interaction in dialogue is a little little funny but it's got a little personality of its own and bethesda said that they 
definitely aren't one to oneing it, but there is some type of new persuasion system in Starfield, and they are mentioning referencing Obs Oblivion as you know a potential touchstone for that. You know, the game that they look at and said, "Hey, we should try something like that, but this instead." Oh yes, the famed lacking of animations where you could just glide. Don't you love gliding? You literally roller skate in this game. <laughs> Oh, the third-person controls in on PC don't feel that great. I'll be real with y'all, especially especially swimming, man. Like the the camera would always go underwater, and when you'd go even with it, you'd go underwater. They never quite got that right. Even in their current games, they never quite got it right. Swampy cave. Let's see what they got. Doesn't this look familiar? Yeah, you were here at the beginning of the game. Not literally, but I could have fooled you, maybe. It's uh, pretty much the same exact location, same assets, and again, kind of the Achilles heel to Oblivion nowadays. If I were on a higher difficulty, I would have been a dead man there because trolls in any Elder Scrolls game are the bane of my existence. Ah, the memories. Man, I was in eighth grade when I played this for the first time. Like I said, it was the first BGS game I played that I fell in love with and really defined the Xbox 360 for me, even though... I played this in 2009, I want to say, or 2010. I, I was I was pretty late. It was actually, it had to be 2009, because I, I, I do recall, as I said in the intro, that Fallout 3 was the game I didn't like, and then I played this and went, oh, wait, hold on, this, this BGS team might have a little magic to them. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I could ever pinpoint that exact moment that... I went, yeah, these games are special. I think it's the overall experience, right? It's why it's difficult to make these types of videos because I don't even know if I do a good job capturing the moment for you all. But I think, again, it's the adventure. As you watch me run around, explore, interact like we do with all these games that we try playing in 2022, you think of your own adventures that you've gone on in the respective games we're covering. And it's been a lot of fun doing this. I, I I love going back to these older games, especially one of my favorites of all time as that, that Vine spazzes out. But this is a special video game for me, and what a perfect way to conclude it. The, the pink sunset in this game, I always thought looked beautiful from day one. It looks even better nowadays. So what do you think of Oblivion in 2022? And what games do you want me to venture to next? I'm absolutely ecstatic to see your thoughts down below this game means the world to me it really was the start of a true life adventure so thank you for watching thank you for coming back in time with me and i'm looking forward to whatever we dive into next so until then take great care of yourselves be sure to follow me on twitter follow me on instagram those links are in the description down below and a big thank you to all the patrons all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here stay sexy stay active i love you all peace